morning, Nigerians. My name is Oche Ocheme, and this is your program, Voice of the Priest Against Corruption. It is a program of the Priest Peace and Justice Initiative, PPJ, mobilizing Christians against corruption in Nigeria with a strong backing from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation and, of course, the Priest Assembly family. We are still dealing with the challenges of coronavirus. Even little children are now familiar with the word coronavirus or COVID-19. What are you doing about it? How much do you know about it? What is your organization doing to help in one way or the other? Today is going to be a very interesting edition as I'm in the studio with someone who people have also been demanding that I bring him back for us to continue from where we stop. Ladies and gentlemen, I am privileged to be in the studio today again with Mr. TV Denedo, who is the program manager of the Priest Peace and Justice Initiative. Good morning once again and welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you. It's my pleasure connecting with you again, even in the in the lockdown or is it post lockdown? You, you have almost become my lockdown partner <laughs> in this. <laughs> anyway, it's it's always exciting to have you in the studio. Uh, of course, how has been your experience over the weeks? I have complied. Mm. I have to comply with that because if I'm seeking compliance for, from others, mm. I need to demonstrate that compliance mm. myself. Mm. If I'm talking about people being accountable in this phase, mm -hmm. I have to show accountability myself. Mm -hmm. So that has been my guidelines. Let me ask you a question, sir. I've had this challenge, and I'm sure you would have had it too. Uh, how have you responded or handled the pressure that comes from friends and relatives I have somebody who I look up to. As a matter of fact, he put up a post on social media that say, "If you if you inbox me asking for money again, I will block your line." <laughs> How has been uh, your experience? Uh, on a lighter way? on a lighter note, mm. there is one thing I saw. Some a, 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 is on social media too. Uh, a man called somebody mm -hmm. or sent a a, a text message. Yeah. Say, I need your yeah, support so. in this time. The guy say, if you ask me for money, I don't have. Say, no, I'm not asking you for money. I'm asking you for financial assistance. <laughs> so, it is there because mm. not everybody mm. has the wherewithal mm. to meet the two weeks lockdown. Mm. And uh, God has been our provider, mm -hmm. as he has always been. Mm -hmm. And uh, for everybody, I posted at the beginning of the lockdown that... This period, mm. they are going to, people are going to face a lot of challenges. Exactly. Those who are uh, cash deficient mm -hmm. are going to ask. If you don't have to give, but at least be polite enough to answer the person so that it doesn't seem that he's being looked down uh, by you. Mm. If you can't meet the person 100%, even mm. if it's 25%, mm. even if it is uh, 50%, mm. try and give. When I posted that thing, Pastor Joe called me mm. and said, uh, Uncle T, you have, you, you have spread something for me. Because just immediately I responded to, to it. Mm. Two people have sent me their account details. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. One, Nigerians, I think this challenge has also brought out the communal spirit in us. Because I know individuals and you know, people have, have done so much to support Definitely. For instance, when it when the lockdown was uh, was uh, announced by the government, a lot of people's worries were how are we, how were they going to survive the two weeks? But if you look back, you will agree with me that God has indeed been faithful. You have not just only gone through uh, two weeks; you have gone over a month. And if you will be if you will be honest, sometimes you look at you look back and you wonder how did we get to this point? So far, so good. We have survived. Like you said in, in the, the, one of the episodes that we, we, were to, we were here, you were here, you say you cannot recall any statistic of deaths from, as a result of hunger or the lockdown, but the, the statistics have been as a result of the infection. So whether you like it or not, people are doing, as a matter of fact, there are people who are doing so much, they may not come out in public to declare what they are doing privately to, to help people, but I know a lot of people who are doing so much and that will take me to my next question of course like you said 
for me, I've always believed that it takes so much courage to ask for help. As a matter of fact, if people are comfortable, they will not ask you, they will not beg you. And so if you have, help. But even if you don't have, there are polite ways of telling these people, you know, to, to, that, that, that will not depress them the more. So which brings me to my next question, sir. One, what has been the Pentecostal family's response to their members in this challenge, during this challenge of coronavirus? Do you think the church has done well enough? And I say this against the backdrop of uh, something I read from my uh, pastor friend, Pastor Frederick Adetiba. He wrote a piece and he said, Pastors, now is the time to open the storehouse. Yeah. He posits that uh, people have been doing so much for the church, contributing, supporting, bringing their tithe, and so on. What can the church give back to the people now? Like the common saying goes, that like charity begins at home. Mm-hmm. I have to use the example of PPA, yeah. Palace of Priest Assembly, the uh, assembly to which I belong. Uh, PPA had done quite well mm-hmm. in terms of being able to reach the less privileged and vulnerable members of the uh, church. They have been called a few times for donations so that uh, food and other consumables Mm. can be sent to the members of the church who could not have it. Mm. I have seen um, a pastor Paul in nature of Dunamis Mm -hmm. on the front line, Mm. not only rendering medical services, but I know the church contributed a hefty sum of money mm. to help in the uh, in the pandemic. Mm. There are other churches that are going to prisons to give food to inmates, even at this time. Mm. And I read of um, an initiative by the Redeemed Christian Church of God mm. setting up an isolation center. I didn't go into the much of it, yes. Mm. But you see, even what the church is doing mm. is. If you are not announcing it is scripture, mm-hmm. whatever your right hand is doing or left hand don't need to know. Mm-hmm. But you see that the church has been at the bashing end of so many people. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go into that, yes, yeah. but I just believe that it is unnecessary and it is um, mm-hmm. uncomplimentary mm-hmm. for people to begin to take mm-hmm. the church as if everything starts mm-hmm. and, and ends with the them, church. with the church. Mm-hmm. There was a time I, I was privileged to host Dr. T.V. Eguzo and on that episode, he, he took a critical look at the social dimension of the church, yeah. uh, which is one aspect of the church that a lot of people have neglected. You know, you remember in the book of Acts, the Bible made us understand that people sold their goods and they brought them to the feet of the apostles, whom they distributed to those, which they distributed to those who are in need. So whether we we'll announce it or not, I agree with you that the church is doing so much. However, we cannot generalize. Right? So what would be your message to those who are still locking up the storehouse and their members are asked, Sir, I met a young man who told me in confidence to say, Sir, after this coronavirus, I'm leaving my church. Because now is the time I needed the church and the church was not there. And I asked him, are you starving? You see, where it's part of it. However, what they needed the most is even they care to reach out to the people to say, okay, how are you doing? Sometimes you even cry to individuals and so on. That's his own. Thing. So for such leaders, leaders of such uh, churches, what would be your word of advice to them, sir? I have looked at this thing very critically. Even beyond the, the church, I've looked at even individual business people, government and the rest of them mm. because I know that there are so many storehouses that are locked mm. it's an investment mm-hmm. because if you invest in the people and you save them there is the rule of nation that those people are going to come back and invest in you mm-hmm. because if, if people die out of hunger or COVID-19 mm. and there is nobody mm. who is going to come who is, who is going to give you returns? Yeah. So it is important. I, th- I think it is just a, a misconception mm. on the part of so many people. You talk about the social dimension of the church. That is the mission of Jesus Christ. 
minister not just to the spiritual the but to the physical mind, absolutely he fed a lot of people mm -hmm. so the story is out there it is because quite a lot of the people who are in church just think that being born again is a sexy <laughs> thing i go to church on sunday i don't have anything to do without so. any other responsibility yes people have to take responsibility mm. what is the scripture teaching you mm. about even your properties mm. what are you to do it there is a there is a, a script i'm writing there now i say is anybody so influential today that you can tell covid 19 where to go and where not to go <laughs> not at all are you so wealthy today that you can buy covid 19 the fangs and the sting from it not at no all. not at all it takes the high and the mighty and it takes the low mm. so which means we should bond Communal living is the only way we are going to get out of this. Mm. So if you have it now, invest it in the people. Mm. At the end of this, all of it. Because this too will surely come to pass. Mm -hmm. People will bring them again. Mm -hmm. Rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And you again. begin to put back into the storehouse. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us, this is Voice of the Priest Against Corruption. And I'm sitting in the studio with Mr. T.V. Denedo. Finally, sir. This is Voice of the Priest Against Corruption. We know You know what we stand for. We are seeing a lot of resources, funds, support being donated to the government. Both at the national level and at the state level. Sir, with all honesty, do you think the government is making judicious use of what they are, here, I mean, they are receiving? The, the first place we even start which I think is one uh, good example of leadership being demonstrated by Lagos State, mm. is that they publish the names of all the donors. Mm. And Account then, accountability. Yes. They have said too that they will publish the expenditures mm. along with it. Interesting. All we are hearing from most of the states is that I was, I was watching uh, an NDDC media program yesterday mm. they talked of 470 million naira given to the is it the 10 ninja or 9 ninja delta state to build isolation center another uh, there was a report that they spent about 6 billion naira to procure ppe materials and a whole lot of that well they've they've come to debunk that allegation that that money was not mm. actually spent but peradventure that money is spent we need to know because there, there, there is so much distrust mm -hmm. between citizens and government mm -hmm. and it's not a very good thing for us. People now believe government is there. We are yeah, here. Yeah. This is a democratic government. Mm -hmm. Government need to be able to say, oh, people, this is how we are spending the money. That's why people don't believe in Nigeria that there is COVID-19. Somebody said that... Um, COVID-19 grew up in China as a disease. In Italy, it became something that in Nigeria, it became a businessman. <laughs> so those are the kind of things that we are beginning to see. And this is informed by the wrong impression created by the way government have been handling yeah. this. Anyway, uh, it's been very interesting talking with you. My only challenge is, when it is necessary, will the people be there to take the right decision? Would we remember how the lead, the government and the pe the leaders have handled or responded to this challenge now? Until we come your way another time. My name remains Oche Oche Me saying, shun corruption, stay at home, stay safe. For more information, you can visit our website www.priestassembly.org or email us at info at priestassembly.org. Twitter at priestassembly.org, Facebook, facebook.com slash priestassembly, and of course, we're on Instagram at priestassembly. Phone number 090 God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Why my people just suffer? Kukos. Why we will you get light? Kukos. The rich be getting richer, the poor getting poorer. Tell me what's the reason? It's corruption. Ha. Corruption. Corruption. But I will never be corrupted. Corruption. Corruption. But I will never be corrupted.